I am a true blue, diehard Dallas Cowboys fan, okay? In the same way, I am also married to my wonderful wife, Tracy. And Tracy and I will both admit that there's certain things that, that, that we're not crazy about with each other. You know, there just is. And, and that's true in any relationship, even with your kids. You love your kids to death, but there's some things that you just want to just wring their, as my mom would say, wring your little neck. That's what my mom used to always say. She loved me, but there'd be some things that you would do that you just don't like. And this is the Dallas Cowboys Sometimes with Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones does some things that I, you just don't like. I, I don't like Catboy and his whole reluctance to spend money on free agents and bring in talent. To, to look at it and say, we are so close, but yet we're not going to do it because of whatever reason, you're just a stubborn old ass. And Jerry Jones, always wanting the spotlight and his ego has destroyed the Dallas Cowboys. And I remember, oh God, last year it was so, oh my God. You know, I wish it had been more popular. But last year at this time, I was getting ready for the Hall of Fame. Three legendary Dallas Cowboys. Three. Cliff Harris, Drew Pearson, and Jimmy Johnson going into the Hall of Fame that same weekend. That was incredible to me, an experience that I will take to my grave, going to uh, Drew Pearson's after party and seeing the greatest of the great of Dallas Cowboys. Rayfield Wright, who, rest his soul, passed away a few months ago, seeing Bob Lilly, seeing Randy White, seeing Charles Haley, seeing uh, Tony Dorsett, seeing... Roger Staubach, seeing all of these greats there coming together. The Hall of Fame, there's only 300 and some odd players out of the, say, 100,000 that have been part of football. For Jerry Jones to try and steal the thunder from Jimmy Johnson to say, hey, you know what? You're going to be in that ring of honor there. I mean, the ring of honor is cool. But in comparison to going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, becoming your brother and equal as a legendary figure, I'm sorry. Jerry, you did that all for your own ego, trying to take the spotlight away from him. And then to renege on that. Now, now let's be clear here. Every Hall of Fame former Dallas Cowboy is in the Ring of Honor except for two. One being primetime, and you could kind of say, yeah, I can understand primetime not being in the Ring of Honor because he was only here for a few years. He was a hired assassin. He was here for one Super Bowl. But for Jimmy Johnson not to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? After what it meant for this team to be rebuilt, I'm not saying that Jimmy Johnson did this all by himself, but I got to tell you, the results of Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones together in that short window versus the 26 years without him, you got to say that Jimmy Johnson was pretty important to getting this team together. And I think, this is my own thing, my own belief in karma that until Jerry Jones becomes a man of his word, that the football gods are never going to smile down on him. It's time to put Jimmy Johnson in that ring of honor. And I thought the perfect time was in that playoff game against the 49ers, knowing that the rivalry that was the Cowboys versus 49ers during the 80s. And that's an opportunity that was truly lost because of Jerry Jones's ego. And now this whole wishy-washiness of <laughs> whatever it is, you know, I don't know about him being, you know what?
until you do right by me. I'm trying to remember. Ladies, help me on this one. Um, the color purple. Until you do right by me. I can't remember the rest of it. Damn it. And I, I, Dallas Sports 1977, they should be as well in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But the problem for the Cowboys is there's so many that are in there that that you, you've, you've got numbers of, I mean, you've literally got the 77 Cowboys. You've got so many. It's hard to keep putting more and more on there. I think they'll be there eventually. I hope it'll be before they go. Harvey Martin, of course, is already gone, who they say had 23 sacks in one season. The various more, shout out to you, 31 months. So we need to do a drawing tonight. Um, and I need to go over to the other desk and get all these put in here. But what I want to do, because we are so close to the beginning of the season, and as we go through and we keep bringing in journeyman players, because that's what we do. We bring in journeyman players and try guys out and things like that and see who sticks and who doesn't. In some regard, that's what Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson did. They brought in a lot of guys. Not all of them stuck. But they found a few here and found a few there and were young enough that they put the team together and they won. And in some regard, that's kind of what we're doing now. And I, I want to go to this. I haven't played it in a long time, but this is one of my proudest moments because uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to get these in the hopper. And then we're going to give away Randy White. I right? listen into this. You're up and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on, <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> but um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle Thank you, Ava. to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the mm -hmm. Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at 3-13 and because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, gotcha, Joanne. there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he, he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous staff, staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St uh, Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh-round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had – struggled his early years we moved him to guard and took a third round pick eric williams at right tackle so you know those players hadn't developed but tony wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line and so you know the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years we were able to win that super bowl so it was a great feeling thank you very much on that I'll follow up you about Charles Haley. Yes. He's a character. <laughs> he is a character. character but he is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early gotcha, in his Gibson. career at Dallas. 
Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games, And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one -on -one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship, and he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? <laughs>